Joshua, the Conqueror. The people of Israel were camped on the border of the land of Canaan. Under the leadership of Moses, they had been delivered from slavery in Egypt and had lived in the wilderness 40 years. Before his death, Moses, by God's command, had chosen a new leader for his people. His name was Joshua. As a young man, Joshua had explored the land of Canaan. It was he who had fearlessly urged the people to enter the promised land. And it was he who, during their wanderings, had worked side by side with Moses. Now, God was directing and encouraging Joshua as he had Moses. My servant Moses is dead. Arise, cross the Jordan River, you and all the people of Israel, into the land which I am giving them. Joshua's great moment had come, but his task seemed beyond human strength. For at this time, the Jordan was swollen by floods and was too deep and swift for the people to wade across. But God reassured Joshua, Do not be afraid and terrified, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. When Joshua heard these words of the Lord, he decided to tell his people to prepare at once for the crossing of the Jordan into Canaan. It would take several days for the Israelites, numbering many hundreds of thousands, to move from their encampment to the banks of the Jordan. Meanwhile, Joshua decided to send men ahead to spy out the land, especially the city of Jericho, which lay just beyond the river. Find out how strong the city is, the size of its walls, and the number of its soldiers. For we must take Jericho before we can go any farther into the land of Canaan. Now go. And God be with you and bring you back safely. The spies were careful. Nevertheless, they were seen entering a certain house in Jericho, and soldiers hurried there to capture them. A woman named Rahab lived in that house, and the soldiers spoke roughly to her. Bring out the men who came to your house. They are spies. Some men did come to me, but... I did not know where they were from. And uh, just about the time the gate was to be closed after dark, the men went out. If you hurry, you can catch up with them. But it was God's will that the spies should not be captured. Rahab had hidden them in a safe place. Then Rahab explained to Joshua's men why she had helped them. I know that your Lord has taken our country and that everybody is afraid of you. There is no courage left in any of us because the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. We've heard how your God dried up the waters of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt. Now swear to me before your God that as I have been kind to you, you will also be kind to me and save my mother and my father and all my family. Our lives for yours. If you'll not tell why we came here, we'll treat you kindly when the Lord gives us this country. The spies promised that they would spare Rahab and her family when Jericho was attacked. A scarlet cord hung in her window would mark the house as that of a friend. With Rahab's help, the spies safely escaped from Jericho and hurried back to Joshua with their report that the whole country feared the people of the Lord. At last, the day came to enter Canaan. Confidently, Joshua urged the people to go forward. The rushing waters of the River Jordan did not frighten him. 
for God had told him what to do. As the Lord had commanded, Joshua told the priests to go first, carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And as the priests stepped into the River Jordan, a wonderful thing happened. Just as at the Red Sea, so here too, God provided a dry path for his people. As long as the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant remained in the riverbed, the waters to the right of them stood as a wall. At God's command, Joshua set up stones on the other side of the Jordan near their camp at Gilgal to remind the people of how the Lord had again helped them by his mighty power. One man from each of the 12 tribes of Israel had brought a stone from the riverbed over which they had passed. And Joshua spoke to the people. When your children in time to come ask their fathers, what do these stones mean? Then you shall tell them, the Israelites crossed over this Jordan on dry ground. The Lord, your God, dried up the waters of the stream, just as the Lord, your God, dried up the waters of the Red Sea. He wants all the people of the world to know how mighty his hand is. And he wants you to fear him forever. Now the gate of the city of Jericho was shut up tightly. No one came out or went in. For the people of Jericho were afraid of attack from the army of Israelites camped outside the city. And when Joshua went out to look at the city and saw the great walls, he wondered how they would ever be able to take the city. But as he stood there in deep thought, he suddenly saw someone near him. It was a man dressed like a soldier and carrying a bright sword in his hand. So Joshua questioned him. Are you one of us or one of our enemies? Neither. I am the captain of the Lord's army. What does my Lord have to say to his servant? Take off your shoes, for the place where you are kneeling is holy. Joshua quickly obeyed his heavenly visitor. And then, as he listened, the Lord made known his plan for taking Jericho, a plan which Joshua followed when he attacked the city. The next day, when the people of Jericho looked out of their windows, they saw a strange procession moving around the walls of the city. First came a company of armed men marching along silently. Then came seven priests, and behind them came more priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Then came more soldiers, but they made no move to attack the city. It was all very strange. They were marching silently around the city with no noise but the sound of their feet on the ground. Once around the great stone wall they marched. Then they returned to their camp at Gilgal. The people of Jericho were puzzled and afraid. Why didn't the Israelites attack the town? What did they mean by this strange silent march around the city? When the Israelites had marched around Jericho every day for six days without any harm coming to the city, some of the people of Jericho began to ridicule their enemy. But Rahab was certain that the Israelites would soon capture Jericho. So she hung a scarlet cord in her window as Joshua's spies had told her to do. On the seventh day, the people of Israel marched around the city again, not once, but seven times. The seventh time, the priests blew loudly on their horns. And Joshua cried out to his people and said, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Then all the people made a great noise, and at the sound, the walls of Jericho began to fall. The Israelites rushed into Jericho and took the city.
But Rahab and her family were spared, as the Israelites had promised. Then all the gold and silver and other valuables found in the city were collected for the treasury of the Lord. For God had commanded that no man should take anything for himself. But a man named Achan disobeyed the Lord. He hid some treasures in his tent. And because of his sin, the children of Israel, who had just won a great victory, were soon to taste the bitterness of defeat. A few days after their glorious triumph at Jericho, the Israelites had attacked the city of Ai, which was much smaller and weaker. Yet Israel had been badly defeated. Joshua couldn't understand what had gone wrong. Why had God suddenly turned against his people? So Joshua again prayed to the Lord. And God revealed to him that one of the Israelites had committed a great sin. Then God told Joshua how to find the man who had brought defeat to the Israelites and ordered that he be punished. When Joshua followed the Lord's direction, the guilty person proved to be Achan. My son, give glory to the Lord God of Israel. Tell me, what have you done? It is true. I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw among the spoils a beautiful Babylonian robe, 12 pounds of silver and a bar of gold weighing two pounds, I wanted them. So I took them. They're buried in the ground in the middle of my tent. So Achan was put to death, and all that he had was burned to ashes because he had taken what belonged to the Lord. After this, the Israelites marched against the city of Ai once more and won a complete victory. Then they built an altar to the Lord at the foot of Mount Ebal. And there Joshua read aloud to the people the law that God had given Moses. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. And now, having heard the word of God, the people of Israel were ready to go forward to new victories in the land of Canaan. Taking city after city, the Israelites moved farther into the promised land until the Canaanites were defeated and driven out. But it took many years before the land of Canaan became the land of Israel. And when Joshua was old, he called all the tribes together at Shechem that he might speak to them once more and remind them of all the good things God had given them. He also warned them of the punishment that would come upon them if they disobeyed the Lord. And if you sin against the commandments of the Lord your God and worship other gods, then God will be angry with you and you will perish quickly and your descendants will lose the good land which he has given you. The people listened carefully to Joshua, for never had his words been more serious. Then he spoke of God's guidance and care for the Israelites, from the time of Abraham to this present day. Fear the Lord and serve him sincerely and faithfully. Put away the idols which your ancestors served and serve the Lord. And if you will not serve the Lord, then choose this day whom you will serve, either the idols your ancestors served on the other side of the river or the idols of the people of Canaan where you are now living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Then the people said, we too will serve the Lord. The Lord is our God and him we will obey. And so it was that through the great leader Joshua, Israel served the Lord and continued to serve him as long as they remembered what the Lord had done for them.